Hello everyone, welcome to the Aquashop Wasabi Aquarium channel. In this video, I'll be teaching you the basics on how to remove cyanobacteria, or sometimes called blue-green algae. When keeping a planted aquarium, many problems can and will happen. One of these problems is cyanobacteria, or cyano for short. It normally looks like a blue-green glaze of sorts, and it can admittedly look pretty sometimes. Now, many people will mistake this for some sort of algae, but in reality, it isn't an algae, but rather a type of bacteria, hence the name cyanobacteria. When you start to see cyano in an aquarium, many things will start to go wrong. One issue is that cyano smells pretty terrible, almost like mold, and that smell will travel around the room that the aquarium is in, being quite unpleasant to both you and anyone else in that room. Another problem is when cyano starts to spread, it spreads very evenly, making the aquarium look like it has this slimy film stuck on it. When it starts to get everywhere, your aquarium will not look as nice and beautiful as it may have been before. Over time, I have had local customers come in telling me that they are considering restarting their entire layout because they got cyano growing in their aquarium, causing a massive headache. Or, I'll hear that they reset their layout a few days ago because cyano started to appear in their aquarium. I would say that more often than not, many people will resort to restarting their aquarium as a way to fix cyanobacteria. In a lot of these cases, I would say that if these aquarists struggling with cyano knew the proper methods and ways of removing slash preventing it, then they would be able to get their aquarium to its original state. That's not to say that resetting an aquarium is a bad method of fixing a cyano problem. For example, in aquariums that have been running for many years, there are a multitude of problems that may have started to happen, like foreground plants becoming unhealthy. So, a cyano problem at that stage can be a happy little accident, so to speak, where it gives you an excuse to do a reset for both the cyano and to restart the plants. But if you just started up your aquarium and cyano started growing, or it's been less than six months or something, then it would be a waste to reset such a young setup with lots of life still left in it. So I would say, save the aquarium reset as the last resort, and instead try some of these proper removal methods I'll be teaching you first. If you do it in this order, there is a pretty big chance of your aquarium returning to normal, so watch this video before you pull the trigger on the reset. First, we need to understand the why. Why does cyanobacteria start to grow in an aquarium? Before I answer that though, the way I like to think about this issue is if you make an environment that cyano cannot grow in, then your problems will be solved. If you want to make that sort of environment, then you need to understand what environment cyano does like to grow in. So there are three conditions that cyano likes to appear in. First, it loves to grow in places with very little flow. For example, the back of the aquarium behind your background plants is a common place to find it growing. Another common place you can find it is in the very front of the aquarium, where Flo has a difficult time getting below the leaves of your foreground plants. For the sake of this video, I purposefully slacked off on trimming to make it easy to see, but there's this little bit of space from the top of the soil to the bottom of the leaves of your foreground plants. It's in that space that you'll find it growing. But in general, any space that gets very little flow for one reason or another is a space that cyano will prefer to grow from. The second condition is water parameters, and I'll first start by talking about dirty aquariums. Cyanobacteria has some connections towards fungi and mold, and as such, it seems to love dirty conditions. With that said, if you are someone who doesn't do maintenance as often as they probably should, then that would be one reason why you would have a cyano problem. This is a pretty easy thing to fix. Just make sure to do proper water changes by siphoning out as much crud as you can out of the foreground area. Uneaten fish food, feces, and other ways seem to build up very easily in areas that you have foreground plants growing in. So just make sure to not let that waste build up for too long, and you should be good to go. To continue with water parameters, Cyanobacteria also likes to grow in alkaline aquariums. For example, in aquariums with soft, slightly acidic water, cyano has a difficult time appearing. But in hard, alkaline water, 
with high GH and a pH of let's say over 7.3. Uh, Cyano seems to have a much easier time getting a foothold in. This particular bit of information is partially based on my personal experiences and observations, but you do see cyanobacteria more often in those hard alkaline aquariums. The last condition that cyanobacteria likes to grow in are aquariums that get too much light. Now don't get me wrong, your plants will love it if you have strong lighting, but if that lighting is too intense, or you're getting direct or indirect sunlight entering the aquarium, then you can run into some issues. A lot of times, whatever spots are getting those beams of sunlight is where you will see cyano start to appear. Cyanobacteria is a photosynthetic organism, so it will go crazy with lots of lighting, and even show some purling, which you probably don't want to see from the cyano. In general, if the aquarium is getting lit from aquarium-specific lighting and not from sunlight, then you shouldn't run into issues with cyano all too much. So those are the three conditions that cyanobacteria likes to grow in. If you can fix these three conditions, then you are on your way to a cyano-free aquarium. Up next, I will show you some general methods of removing cyano from your aquarium. I won't be going super in-depth for this video, that will be next episode. So for now, I'll show you what are some general techniques you can use to remove cyanobacteria from your aquarium. For this video, I'll be using this 60cm layout as my example. If you look over here in the corner, the glossy stigma here has grown like crazy, and as such has restricted flow from getting into the lower parts of the plant. It's a little hard to pick up on camera, but there are some little bits of cyanobacteria growing in this area down here. So now I'll show you how I go about tackling a cyano problem such as this one. The first step is to physically remove that cyano out of the aquarium, which can be achieved by taking your siphon hose and siphoning out as much as you can see. Now I'll remove the cyano with some aquarium water. Yeah, this gloss has started getting overgrown real fast. I actually wanted to see if I would get any cyano if I left this patch alone, so I purposely let this corner get really thick and overgrown. And lo and behold, I got some cyano, albeit not a lot of it, mainly due to the fact that this aquarium is very clean and well maintained. In a way, you can even make the connection between your beneficial bacteria and the cyanobacteria, where if that beneficial bacteria is thriving and doing its job, then it will starve out the cyano until it's all gone. I prefer using natural methods of pest removal, so in this case, I recommend you let nature, also known as your beneficial bacteria, do its job and starve off the cyano to make it disappear naturally. So I think I've already siphoned out most of the cyano that I was able to find. Again, there wasn't much for me to remove, so that's why I'm done so quickly. When you do this at home, you don't need to remove 100% of the cyano in one go. Aiming for 80 or 90% is perfectly okay. Just remove as much as you can. Next, it's time to tackle the main reason why cyano started to appear in this aquarium. The reason why it started to appear was due to the glossostigma over here getting very overgrown, and as a result, restricting flow around this area of the aquarium. So to fix this problem, it's as simple as trimming that overgrown glossostigma. In this case, I'm trimming pretty heavy, just to make sure that water flow can return to this area of the aquarium. So just like that, the overgrown glosso that was restricting flow is now gone. After trimming, it is pretty common to see some areas of cyano that you may have missed initially, and that's okay. In this case, I do see a little bit that I missed. Another thing is if the soil underneath that area you trimmed has turned to sludge, then it would be wise to siphon out that sludge and replace it with some new soil. It can be a powder type soil if you have foreground plants like I do, or a normal sized soil would work perfectly fine. And it is okay to pour the soil over whatever plants are left over in that spot you trimmed slash siphoned out, so just go ahead and put in the new soil. Next, I'll be adding some ADA Bacter 100 to the aquarium. Now if you don't know what this is, Bacter 100 is a bacteria product that's in a powderized form, where the bacteria are essentially asleep until they touch water. 
So the way I like to quote unquote clean up cyano is by adding some of this extra beneficial bacteria to the aquarium and letting these bacteria break down the cyano until it's gone. The main thing here is that this product is not a strong medication, as I personally try to avoid using them as much as I can. Because this isn't a strong medication, the cyano will not disappear in an instant, but rather it will gradually disappear as the cyano gets broken apart. So if you are looking for instant cleanup, then this is not one of those methods. With that said, it's very simple to add. Just take a small spoonful of the powder and drop it into the aquarium in the areas that had the cyano growing. Because this is a beneficial bacteria product, you cannot overdose it, so feel free to add as much as you want. The best way to add this stuff is by lowering your water level first, then adding the powder. It's not bad to add the powder like how I did just now, but expect it to spread out and make the tank look cloudy. And just like that, you want to coat the area where the cyano was with the Bacter 100, and then you're done. By doing this, again, you won't see overnight results, but you will see the cyano stop spreading and then gradually start disappearing from these bacteria doing their job. If you don't have that much visible cyano in your aquarium, then the problem may be fixed from this step alone. So let's say you have a ton of cyano spreading in your aquarium and you just want to remove it as fast as possible. If that's the case, then I recommend you pick up some ADA Phyton Git Sol. This is a type of natural, plant-based disinfectant that works really well to get rid of cyano. It doesn't work as fast as a harsh medication, mainly because it isn't one, but it is very fast acting for a naturally derived product which is my preference over something artificial. Now Phyton Git Sol is the new and improved formula over the original Phyton Git. Other than ingredient tweaks, the main difference between this new formula and the old one is that this new one is a lot more of a syrupy consistency rather than a straight liquid. The benefit of having a thicker liquid is that the Phyton Git Sol will stay in place for a lot longer than the original formula. This leads to a more effective removal of the cyano, which is always a good thing. So, I'll be adding it to the space next to where I put the Bacter 100 for it to be easy to see. It comes with a dropper, so just suck some of the Phyton Gets Soul up, and then spread it over the areas that you want to treat. It may be difficult to see, but because of how heavy the liquid is, it really stays in place to make sure the treatment works the best it can. In terms of the strength of these two products on cyano busting, the Phyton Get Soul is way stronger than the Bacter 100. But again, because it is a plant derived product, it won't be as fast as an artificial medication. In exchange, the Phyton Get Soul will not cause any harm whatsoever on any of your inhabitants, which is something I cannot say for these harsher chemicals. And just like that, if you have a cyanobacteria problem, I recommend using either Bacter 100 or Phyton Get Soul to help fix it, along with the other methods I have taught you in the video. So early in the video, if you remember, I siphoned out some cyano and trimmed the gloss of stigma here at the front. When you do these steps, it is inevitable that some cyano will escape and spread in the aquarium. A lot of it will probably not be visible and in a properly maintained aquarium, these bits of cyano shouldn't grow. But if you want to be extra thorough about eliminating any and all amounts of cyano, then I would recommend using some of ADA's Phyton Git Plus. This is basically the same as the Phyton Git Soul we just used, but without the syrupy consistency. The way you use it is simple. You just add a certain number of drops based on the size of your aquarium. In this case, I have a standard 60cm aquarium, so I'll be adding 3 drops. 
And with that, I added my preventative treatment just to make sure that any cyano leftovers will be dealt with. Just like the Soul version, the Plus version is also a plant-based product, so it's not going to harm any of your livestock or beneficial bacteria. So until your cyanobacteria problem has completely disappeared, I would say adding some periodically would be beneficial for the sake of having peace of mind. Alright, how was the video? This time I showed you the steps you should take in order to remove cyanobacteria. I know that the idea of resetting the aquarium as soon as you see cyano exists, but it doesn't have to be that way. To be honest, resetting an aquarium because of cyano is tiring, costs money, and is labor intensive work that is quite frankly a pain to deal with. So instead of going for the reset immediately, please try these steps that I've taught you first to see if it can fix your problem. Because this was a basics video, I did not cover any quote unquote hard chemicals or medications that can be used for cyanobacteria. Another reason why I didn't mention them is that I personally believe in using the least intrusive and harmless methods possible to remove cyano. I want to make sure that all of my fish, plants, and beneficial bacteria are completely unaffected, but that's just me. If you did all these steps and you're still struggling with cyano, which is very unlikely, then it might be time to go for a more heavy-handed approach. I will eventually cover these heavy approaches in a future video, so please be on the lookout for that video if you are interested. If this video has helped you out in any way, then please leave a like and subscribe to the Wasabi Aquarium channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. I won't be able to answer everyone's questions individually, and I apologize for that. However, if the same sort of question gets asked many times, I will make a follow-up video to answer said question, so I hope you don't get discouraged from asking.